What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and today we're going to be talking about painting a truck. Specifically, uh, this is going to be a video of creating the uh, Toyota trophy truck for the Automobilista uh, stadium truck that was released fairly recently. Uh, this isn't really a tutorial, it's more of a showcase that kind of is a tutorial but really isn't intended. It'll make more sense as the video goes on. And I do apologize for having the mouse cursor turned off, although there are some click bubbles when I do click. Uh, I, this isn't what I usually do by any means, but a lot of people over the years have asked if you can paint cars for various titles, and the answer is pretty much always universally yes. The only exception uh, that is somewhat modern would be race room racing experience, unfortunately. All the cars are going to be painted the same fashion, uh, regardless if you're painting for iRacing or... Uh, R-Factor 2 or Automobilista or Subtle Corsa project cars. It's all going to be done in the same fashion. It's just the exporting that's different. Uh, in this case, I'm using Photoshop. If you're interested in getting into painting cars yourself, you can go ahead and use GIMP or Paint.net. You can find a link down in the description. Both of those work just as well as Photoshop in this case. I only use Photoshop because I use Photoshop for other things. Uh, so, yeah. Again, this isn't really a tutorial, but it kind of is by nature, but it really isn't. And I apologize for not having the mouse cursor turned off. It does get, make things confusing, but I think some of you guys would like to see this anyways. And I'm not about to record this video over again, because it takes quite a while. So, yeah, enjoy. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is create the base paint scheme. We need to create the colors. Right now, we're only worried about the striping in this case. We're not worried about all the sponsor decals and anything like that. Uh, we just want to get this red, orange, and yellow stripe in there uh, on the sides of the trucks as well as on the, the center section there. And that is our main concern here. So we're going to come over here to Photoshop. We're going to create a new layer. And we're going to make sure that's at the very top of the pile. And from there, we're just going to use our brush tool, put a puddle of color there, switch our colors using the X key or this little arrow, put another color puddle there and then we're going to uh, mix up our orange and then we're going to just put another color there and that just does not look quite right. We can make that a little bit more orange, a little bit more red, red and orange there and there we go and I actually got that totally backwards but that's okay. We're just using this section here to pull our color from that way later on we can be assured that we're pulling the same color and it's the shading that is going to affect it. And because that's at the top, there's going to be no other layers interfering with the color because as you can see here, if I put this at the bottom, suddenly my colors have sort of changed depending on where we have it. You know, this color here is not this color here, is not this color in this little gradient, is not this color. It's all discolored because of the shading layer and we don't want that. We want to make sure that only the shading layer is affecting our color. So that's why that goes at the very top right there. So the first thing to do now that we have our color sort of mapped out, uh, at least roughly, is come over here. We're going to uh, make our vehicle white. It's already white, but it's not quite the right white. And we're going to change the values. Uh, here you can see the RGB values, uh, and you can change which way you select the color and all sorts of malarkey but the one thing to know is that you should never make your vehicle 255 255 255 255 255 is um, the values of the red green and blue uh, pixels essentially and by turning that down to like 245 across the board you're still getting a consistent whitish color but it's not a pure bright white it's actually slightly gray uh, and the reason why we want that is because that is going to enable the game to render some highlights and it's just going to look better. And you should also consider the same thing with black as well. Rather than using a 0, 0, 0 black, you might want to come up here to like 27, 27, 27 in this case. You know, just to give it a little bit of color, that way the, the game engine, but it's a good habit to be in. So now that we have our colors mapped out, we have the base color of the truck painted, we want to go ahead and uh, get going on the stripe itch. And you can see, depending on uh, which year, which body style they're running at that time, you know, the stripes start in different spots. And, uh, yeah. 
Well, we are painting a super truck after all, not a, uh, a Toyota trophy truck. So we do have a little bit of freedom there. It's not going to ever be 100% exact, and we shouldn't be worried too terribly much about being 100% exact in this case. This isn't a real-world replica on a real-world body, so it's always going to be slightly goofy. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. You can see the bed of the truck here. Uh, this section and to the right is separated from the cab ever so slightly, which means that if we were to wrap you know, basically draw our stripe from here to there. We would need to kind of consider for that section, which would just take more time. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm not looking to spend more time on it. And stripe uh, stops at the trailing edge of the cab of the truck. We don't need to worry about it because it's like that in the real truck anyway. So we're going to go ahead and switch on over to our pen tool. You could just press the key as our, or the P key as our keyboard shortcut. And we're going to make sure it is set to the shape mode. Uh, and basically we're going to click where we want to start. We want to click where we want our stripe to go. That looks about right to me. And then we're just going to shift click over, uh, shift click over, and shift click over. And there we go. We have the red portion of our truck. And we're actually going to position it because this is going to be useful. Now we know that looking over here there was this kind of side panel you know, silver area and that black stripe, so we do have a little bit of space at the bottom. I'm just going to make sure that I nudge that up a little bit that way in our next couple of steps we're filling in all of the colors. So we have that where we want it. That's our uh, red taken care of. We're going to make a duplicate of that layer. We're going to drag that underneath our red layer and then we're just going to nudge it over using the shift arrow keys. And Now we're going to uh, Come up here, grab that, that color, that orange color that we're looking. You can use the eyedropper tool to do that as well. And then we're going to Alt Backspace here in this case, uh, Photoshop default key bindings, to fill that layer with the color. And there you go. There's our orange stripe. We're going to Alt, click and drag to create a copy and move it. Uh, that's a different technique you can use. Grab our eyedropper again. Grab our color. And there you go simple as can be. Now we need, do need to get this kind of positioned and cleaned up a little bit. As you can see the orange stripe is a little bit wider than the uh, the yellow stripe so we need to make sure we replicate that as well. And I also think our orange can maybe be a little bit brighter although it can be the lighting. It can be deceiving. I think we'll leave it as is because I'm lazy and I think it's, it's good enough. So we're going to come over here and we're going to actually find our orange layer and we're just going to nudge that over a little bit. We're going to nudge our yellow layer over a little bit more and get it positioned. You don't necessarily need to be entirely 100% accurate. It's not going to matter that much. going to name our layers just so that way they're easier to keep track of. And there we go. I'm going to actually shift click select these and then I'm going to group them just to make my life easier. And we're, we're just going to call that the left SID because I apparently didn't type, press the E key hard enough. We're going to click and drag that while holding the shift key to the uh, new layer icon to duplicate that layers. And then we're going to send this over here to the other side of our truck. We're going to get rid of our template, our palette I should say. Uh, position that roughly, transform, flip it vertically because we want to flip it so our stripes stay intact and want to kind of make sure that we're roughly even from one side of the truck to the other side of the truck so our stripes look right. Uh, and one actual tip that you can use is turn your wireframe layer on and find where your stripe in this case crosses over the endpoint of the wireframe and then just draw a guide and then you can line it up by nudging it up and down to be roughly about the same and then presto changeo your uh, stripes carried across and it's uh, symmetrical nice and easy we're going to name that the uh, the right SID because again we're just keeping things consistent. But as you can see, there is kind of a problem here. 
and this is kind of a bit of a fail on my part. I should have caught this earlier and should have did this beforehand. We have no white in between the stripes. And you can see on every single version of that paint scheme, there is white between the stripes. That's what makes part of the design work, right? So we need to go ahead and add those in. And I should have actually did this beforehand because it would have made life a little bit easier, but hey, I screwed up. So to do that, we're going to click the FX icon here, and we're going to add a stroke. A stroke is basically uh, brushing around that path, that shape layer, uh, essentially. And we're going to set it to what we feel is appropriate to make it look right. In this case, we're going to go with a 10 pixel wide stroke. We can control how wide we want to make it. We can make it super wide, we can make it not so wide, but 10 is going to be about right. And again, we're using 245, 245, 245 as our base white layer. And there we go. And that'll blend in with the base of the truck as well because it's the same color. We're going to Alt click to uh, drag that FX layer across. And we're going to do the same thing there. And we're going to open up our right side group. And we're just going to drag that on in there, drag that on in there, drag that on in there. And presto changeo through the magic of Photoshop, we have now achieved our desired result. Looking nice. If we decided that we needed to go ahead and position one of the layers a little bit, uh, we can just go ahead and you know click in here, open up our groups again, and just control select our two different layers, and then we can take them both and, and move them around at the same time. That way it's consistent across the sides of the vehicle from left to right side, uh, and you don't need to worry about that. So everything is looking good from that stand front standpoint front stand I, I don't know now we just need the uh, center section of the vehicle which this is actually going to be really incredibly easy alright so now we need to make the middle stripe so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to create a new layer and actually I don't even need to do that so let's go ahead and delete that we're going to go back to our uh, we're actually going to use the rectangle tool here because it's going to be nice and convenient and we're just going to simply put Draw a rectangle. Most difficult and complex thing you've ever done when painting a vehicle is make a rectangle. And that is somewhat true, somewhat not true. But uh, where you have a red color in there, yeah, duplicate that layer, nudge it over a little bit, put it underneath there, uh, come up here, and grab our color, fill that in. That's the wrong color. Fill that in again. Going to position that a little bit further forward, duplicate that layer, bump that over a little bit, put that underneath there, go back, grab our uh, our color there, and yeah, there we go. We have our our three different uh, layers. We'll turn our palette off, and now we just kind of position them, position them accordingly, and kind of bump them over. Try and make sure that we have our stripes a consistent length. And we're at least consistent enough people aren't going to complain about it. Again, shortcuts and magic, that's how things work. If, if this was a real truck, uh, if this was like the proper body for this vehicle, I would be more concerned. I would pay more attention to that. But given that it's already different, it doesn't really matter too much. And then we're just going to carry over our um, outlines from our stripes. I see I lost one, and essentially we are pretty much good to go. Let's turn our wireframe off just so that way we can see. I don't know what that layer is for, but that way we can see where we are right now. And we're pretty solid at this point. We have our stripes, we have everything where we want them to go. Um, now, roof, maybe? No, it looks like they just carried the stripe back over the top of the roof. Uh, and that's just grand, which means that we just have the well side panel coloration as well as the top of the quarter panel. So let's go ahead and take care of the top of the quarter panels uh, really quickly. Actually, let me rename our uh, stripes. Always a good idea to uh, make sure you rename things because it will make your life a lot easier when you inevitably have a screw up and you need to control Z all of the things. 
So we group that up, and there we go. And actually, we're going to totally cheap, cheap out here. We're going to turn our pallet back on, grab our red, and make a new layer on top, and we're going to just turn our wireframe on. And now we're just going to uh, paint by numbers and just fill in there. Stay within the lines and you'll be golden. Yeah. There you go. And you can see because of the layers, uh, we don't need to worry about painting in this black area because this black area is actually above where we're painting. Uh, it's essentially like a stamped on decal going over the top. So we're painting underneath it. And actually if we hid that section, you can see, oh no, we went outside the lines, but it's hidden anyways, so we don't need to and uh yeah there we go there's that taken care of and now we just need to uh get that that striped panel in there you can see they got a little bit of a silver accent down here a little bit of a black thing kind of running across the uh, wheel wells and they're pretty consistent in that design so let's go ahead and add that in and to do that we're actually going to in my case, just because of the way I like to work, I'm going to start from a new layer above everything else rather than adding it into the groups. For this little... Why did I open that? For this little... This is all live. For this little uh, black stripe detail that they got going on, as well as this silver uh, lower side panel, we're kind of confronted with a little bit of an issue here. And that is the difference in the shape of the body. As you can see, this is kind of more curved, more flowing uh, compared to the super truck, which is really incredibly boxy. And the fender flares are also very boxy. So it kind of doesn't necessarily jive and flow as nicely. We kind of are confronted with a design decision here because really looking at this, we should have this silver panel down here. Uh, that, that is something we would like to keep, but we don't really have space because if we follow the outer edge of the fender flares like in the actual truck, we'd have this section here which kind of wraps down and curves around and then really it just naturally kind of follows this section. We could make that black stripe run across to this area, which I think is what we're going to end up doing, but I just don't think that's going to look all that great to be entirely honest. So we've gone ahead and busted open the pin tool and got that set to shape and we're just going to click, hold, and drag, follow the line, come back here, create another path, and just kind of keep on trucking. Keep on trucking indeed. Ideally, we would like to uh, kind of follow this particular line right here, this bottom one. Uh, because that is going to be just the outer edge base of the fender flare rather than the uh, ones that are a little bit further back because those are different parts of the curved kick out panel section thingy majigger. So we're just going to follow our wireframe and you know honestly I don't that that silver portion is just going to have to go cuz i'm i'm just visualizing the duct here and if we cross over with our little accent stripe here over to that it's just going to look very weird because you're going to be going from this very hard edge you know end of the fender flare to sort of this curved area and going across from this to this flat area across this complex curve really into this kick out panel just isn't going to look quite right so actually I'm just going to go ahead and take artistic license once again and we're just going to keep on following our uh, our angle we're not going to worry about how it's looking right now in terms of the fill because we're going to come back and get that later on but you can see we're actually in there and kind of confronted by our first little issue here and that is the bed of the truck is different than the uh, than the cab of the truck you can see they're at different heights so I'm gonna actually go ahead and do those two layers separately again we're just gonna kinda come in here control where our fill is going and 
There we go. We're going to come back here now and make our next section, which is going to be for the uh, bed of the truck, and duplicate the same process. Just going to click and drag, follow our, uh, check to see where our, our guide path, what where that ends up, our fill, I guess I should say. I'm just going to follow things around here, click and drag to make them curves. And you can see, you probably won't be able to see in the YouTube video because uh, of all the compression and everything like that, but you can see you'll have your little line that shows you basically where your curve is and, and all that. And we'll go through here just real quickly and complete our fill area. And we'll turn the UV layer off, our wireframe, uh, just to make things easy to see. And yeah, that's that's great. And actually, uh, yeah, I'm gonna group these layers. And then once again, I'm going to uh, rename it, create a copy, duplicate it, send it on over to the other side. Then flip it vertically. Turn our wireframe layer back on just so that way we can see. And position that sucker. And somewhere along the lines, I must have gone horribly wrong, or this truck is not symmetrical. And I'm just now noticing that. Which would be horrible, to say the least. But I think I might have accidentally nudged it. We're just going to line it up with our uh, wireframe there where we know we should be. And boom, presto, change -o, like magic. We're golden. So let's go ahead and uh, add some. Let's go ahead and black out this window frame, actually, because I just think that's going to be a problem because I don't think there's anything going over this in game. Uh, and we'd like something. So we're going to go back to our pen tool. Set to shape path mode thingy majigger that we've been using this whole time. If you haven't figured it out by now, you're never going to figure it out. Then we'll just go ahead and run through this little line here, being careful that we're painting outside of the lines and not getting inside the lines in this case. As you can see, these are actually two separate panels. This is the window frame, this is the roof of the truck. And this bright green area denotes where the cutoff point is. So I want to make sure that we're staying just on the window frame, not getting on the uh, on the roof. And I might have that slightly in the wrong there. There we go. And there, there we go. I'm going to carry our curve over. Click and drag to make that a curve, a nice and long curve. And position that, position that. Once again, we're going to paint outside of the lines, but inside of the lines in their own goofy fashion. And boom. Boom. So we're going to turn that off, hide that, and bask in the awesomeness of 1980s, 1990s Toyota tri-colored stripe action. Yeah! Now I'm basically going to go ahead and save that uh, out really quickly. For Automobilista here, it's going to be a DDS file and uh, we need to navigate to our section here and we're using the beta version here. This isn't really a tutorial on how to get a vehicle in game, but uh, we're going to go ahead and save that out. And I've gone ahead and taken all the steps necessary to get this puppy in game. I'm going to save it as a DDS in this case, which you will need to download a plugin for, which you can find that down in the description. We want to replace the file that's already there, save it as a DXT5 in this case, let it save, let it do its thing. We'll take a look. And there we go. 
I'll switch over to Automobilista here real quickly and back out of the showroom. Switch vehicles and presto changeo. Woo yeah! Now we will need to take care of the uh, the holy glossiness of our vehicle, but you kind of see we kind of got things going the way we want things to go. Although we will need to carry that stripe over onto the cab support for optimal awesomeness. Or we could actually leave it like it is. I'm not gonna lie, I actually do kind of like it the way it is. It actually looks like it's supposed to be that way. We might need to consult with the uh, original there. But, uh, yeah. Ooh. Super glossy. Super glossy, to say the least. But uh, that's a specular map thing, which we will take care of a little bit later. It doesn't really matter right now. All right, so off camera, I actually went ahead and uh, quote unquote fixed the uh, the template, the issue with the specular uh, specular map and the gloss level, basically, because uh, the way they created the template, I think they kind of goofed up a little bit in saving out the different uh, channel for it. Weird to explain and things like that that I'm not going to go into too much detail on because it's too confusing. But yeah, so uh, I've Dropped it in game here, and it looks like it should uh, now, but I do feel like the white is too bright for the majority of the truck. I don't think the white that I used itself was necessarily wrong, but I think with so much of the truck being white, I should actually go ahead and go back and turn that down to a lighter or darker white, I guess I should say. Uh, more of a very, very, very light gray, even more so than what I already have. Uh, just to kind of help maintain a little bit more detail on here. Like if we were using this on the sides, we're fine. But up front, I just would like to try and get more detail in the shading. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the color of the truck to not be white, not be so white uh, to fix it. But otherwise, I'm pretty pleased with where we are with the base. And I actually went ahead and checked as well. And it turns out this pillar here, uh, some years they ran with it the stripe continuing across, some years they didn't, and on and on and on, but actually I kind of like the way it fits, even though it might seem slightly goofy, but it just seems to, it seems to work, it seems to work, so I'm going to, especially, yeah, I like, I like the way that stripe kind of carries up and over, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but it's staying the way it is, so deal with it, if you want it differently, paint it yourself, so I'm going to go ahead and make those changes and fire it up again. Alright, so at this point, we have our base paint completed. We have everything, you know, looking the way we want. We might make some small little changes uh, before this is finished, but overall, pretty pleased with where we are right now. Uh, so that means that we're on to the time-consuming and not-so-exciting portion of the show. That is decals. Decals, decals. Part of a race car, a race truck, is decals. Just, I mean, it just won't be the same. They they make you go faster and things like that. We need to put these sponsors on our truck to make it look proper. And uh, that can be easy. It can be difficult. Uh, yeah. This is one of the areas that, going back to kind of where we originally started versus, uh, you know, the Forza style of painting with the vinyl layers and things like that, this is a portion of uh, painting on PC with Photoshop that you can just absolutely plow through things when they go correctly, or alternatively, you can end up having to remake a bunch of logos for companies that don't exist and things like that, and just takes a heck of a lot of time sometimes. Fortunately, in this case, I think we're going to have a pretty easy time because it looks like we're working with some... Uh, relatively easy to find logos or what should hopefully be easy to find and to find them Google is your friend yeah Google thing it's the internet use Google use Google but uh, yeah you can just look through the years we're not doing a specific year or specific version or anything like that but we're just kinda looking at what we what we need to find what stickers we need to put on our truck to make it look proper and why did they ever use that this is so much cooler so much cooler so, so much cooler. Well, we need a Toyota logo, BF Goodrich, MCI. Uh, maybe if we can find some of these small little decals, uh, 
Nippon didn't so. Uh, again, some of these small little logos. Uh, ultra wheels, ultra custom wheels. They're not just custom, they're ultra custom. That's how custom they are. Uh, TRD logo, things like that. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, just Google. Yeah, that's what you do. Because it makes your life easier, rather than having to uh, search all these things out. So, looking for a Toyota logo because we want to take that sweet, sweet, sweet Toyota text. We want to just go ahead and grab that. And they might have changed it over the years because it looks like it's slightly different. A little bit more bold now. But I think, given that we are painting a more modern scheme, uh, or a more modern vehicle, I might actually want to use the more modern logos. Uh, so, if possible... You want to find either a, a vector version or as big of a logo as possible. So you just click search tool size large. There you go. There you go. And we're just going to take this puppy. Yeah. Right click, copy that. And we're going to open up a new file in Photoshop. And we're just going to make this freaking thing huge. The bigger the better when it comes to logo. I'm going to call that the logo scratch pad. We're going to be consulting to this puppy fairly frequently for the uh, rest of the show. We're going to go up here, get our magic wand tool out. We're going to take our text. We're going to select all of our different letters. Make a new layer. And then we're going to go back in here. What was it? 20 uh, ish? I can't remember what color I used for the side panel, but we're, we're using. We're using that color now. We're just going to copy that text that we just put in there. And very important, we're going to create a new group. We're going to call it Sponsors. Sponsors. If I could spell, if I could type, right? And we're going to paste that puppy on in there. And make sure we're putting it in our sponsor folder here. And again, rename it. It's very important to rename, and now we position things. So in this case, we're going to rotate this puppy. We're going to shrink it down because uh, we're actually going to start at the front here and turn our wireframe back on. And actually, allow me to undo that. Allow me to start over, please. Jump the gun a little bit. So, and delete that Toyota. It's very handy to rename them because later on when you get more sponsors on the vehicle and you need to position things around, it can become very, very much of a hassle. So we want to position this puppy right there. And we want to basically make this as wide as the stripe. I'll make it look good. Yeah. Now you can see we're kind of a little bit too close. So actually what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to push our center section stripes I'm going to push those back I'm going to go back to my sponsor, go back to my Toyota logo and there we go see kind of like I said you, sometimes you're going to end up making changes after you've got everything laid out and there's not much you can do about it so just just expect it, just deal with it but uh, let's go back to the truck here it looks like the Toyota logo is always in the white except for this year so Thank you, this year of Toyota truck, because it can make my life easy. Here we, we want to make sure we drop that big old Toyota logo on the side, because after all, this is a Toyota sponsored truck, so therefore, Toyota logos everywhere! Yeah, Toyota logo, all of the things. And we're going to kind of position this in a way we find tasteful. And I think. I think that might do the trick. Yes, we are technically kind of going a little bit too far, but again, this isn't a paint scheme from a stadium super truck. It is a paint scheme from a freaking Baja trophy truck. It's a totally different thing, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to steal the uh, the stroke from the other layers just that way I know the right color, and I'm going to actually go ahead and decrease that. And as you can see, whoa, whoa there. I can change the size of the stroke, and that changes how much of an outline that we get. We want something tasty. I think three will look about right for where we are. 
going to take this. Oh my goodness, why did I do that? And I'm going to turn the auto select off, but uh, I'm going to drag this on over to the other side as a duplicate. Rotate it 180 degrees. Very important that you rotate it rather than flip it, because otherwise your text will not show up correctly. And then you'll have a sad face, and nobody likes sad face. And I think that should actually look correct-ish in the actual finished product. If not, well, you know what? I'm going to hedge my bets and say, ha ha! See, this is one of those things. If I didn't make this series of videos, <laughs> you guys probably would have never noticed. Nobody would have guessed. But once you actually see it, you're like, wow, that's lazy. And yeah, it is lazy, but... <laughs> but... Sometimes it works. So let's go ahead and put a BF Goodrich logo on there, because everybody likes some BF Goodriches, right? Hey, yeah, BF Goodrich. Right there, convenient. High quality, exactly what we need. Boom, zoom in, copy, paste that puppy on into our scratch pad. This might actually be too big. I think it's too big. Yeah. But again, the bigger the logo, the better. The better <laughs> it is to work with, the better everything is. Find as big of a logo as possible. And... Yeah, you'll see these numbers down here, 2100 by 535 in this case. That's the resolution. Uh, that's the pixel count of the image. The bigger, the better. Okay, and if it looks like crap, don't use it. Find something else. Uh, and if you can't find something else, then either remake it or figure out a way to uh, work around it. So, I'm going to basically keep on doing these decals, and I'm going to do this off screen because that's all you're really doing. You're just finding the logo, tracking it down, copying it into a file, changing the colors, and pasting it into and then you're just going on and on and on and on and on, and you're doing that all the friggin' time, and it's actually really boring, but it's it's part of the uh, part of the process. So I'm going to cut it here, and this truck will probably look a little bit different by the time you see it again. All right, so I've finally finished everything up. Sponsors that uh, needed to be dropped in there than what I was kind of expecting, uh, but... Uh, Finally, everything's done. We got the layout, we got the sponsors, we got the number plate. Uh, just to kind of give you a reference as to how many there were on this portion. Uh, real quick and easy. I mean, this isn't isn't difficult. It's just time consuming. As you can see, all these layers, I eventually just ended up giving up on uh, naming them properly. Just because <laughs> it's getting to the point where it just wasn't worth it. But... Uh, I've gone ahead and exported it. I've saved it out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at it in game. That is one spicy looking truck if I do say so myself. Seriously, Toyota. Someone from Toyota happens to see this for some unknown reason. Why are you not running that that color scheme anymore? It just looks absolutely fantastic. It looks absolutely right. But uh Really all there is left to do now is to, well, actually, I think I'm going to make one more small little change. That's what previewing your car in game should be used for, you know, making sure that uh, you're happy with the way it looks. And I think I need to bump back the logos on the bed of the truck a little bit. But other than that, I think we are good to go. So I'll just go ahead and make that change off camera. It'll take me couple of seconds at most and uh, that's that we'll be done so I'm just gonna go ahead and make that change I'll wrap it up package it up and uh, upload it somewhere and there you go that's the creation of a super truck for automobilista in the Toyota racing colors as made famous by Ivan Iron Man Stewart and the uh, super off-road video game should go play some super off-road. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Hi, right, bye.